It's game time. Today, a dozen death-defying daredevils of Splatalot will go head-to-head -head with the defiant defenders as they strive to capture the highly coveted crown of Splatalot. Will these defenders be able to keep the castle safe from the attackers, preserve the kingdom of Splatalot, and in the end, reign victorious? Who will tumble? Who will tilt? Who will teeter? And who will go splat? Hello and welcome to Splatalot, the ultimate medieval obstacle course that will test the skill and will of 12 brave young attackers. I'm Jason Agnew, alongside me, the madman, Matt Chin, and we will be here to guide you through what is sure to be a seriously messy adventure. Messy indeed. But what's more fun than watching kids go splat? The attackers are trying to capture the crown, but in order to do that, they will have to survive the course. The first challenge is to cross the moat. Only the six attackers with the fastest times will advance. Next up, it's time to escape the stockade and defy the revolving wheel of certain doom. Only the finest four will advance to round three, where it's a head-to-head -head competition to capture the crown of Splatalot. There it is in all its pseudo-medieval glory. In round one, things have the chance to get pretty messy as the attackers hop off the start platform and onto those baffling barrels. Then they need to make their way up the slippery slope. And onto the terrifying rolling mace. Then down, way down the impossible incline. And onto the beastly battle axes across the old bridge of disaster. Over the perilous pole vault. And onto the flaming finish platform. Uh, yeah, it's not flaming. A guy can dream. As if that wasn't challenging enough, throughout this game, the mighty defenders will be menacing our attackers at every turn. In the moat today, Weapons Master Tingor. And the super savage Huntress Crocness. And the kooky kook himself, Kookaburra. Welcome to Splatalot. <laughs> Watch your backs. <laughs> The course is set, the defenders are in place, and it's time to get to the action. Our first attacker is Eileen. I love purple carrots! She loves purple carrots. Bonus points for originality. Hey, don't miss, wait, how oh, We're not helping on the barrels today, let's see that again. Always worth a replay. Where is she? Here she is! There you are. How you doing, mate? Oh! Nice aim, Crocness. I know. As a perfectionist, she'll be happy to know she's the perfect target for Croc and the paintball bazooka. Purple carrots! Again with the purple carrots thing. Maybe that's what she calls bruises. Purple we have a worthy challenger. Oh! Come eat me, Eileen. I'm so tasty. Psych! Now she's up and trying again. Here we go. There he is. Tinker! <laughs> but this time she's got Tinkor to contend with. Over to the rope bridge now, Maddie. <laughs> rope bridge, more like rope burn. She's up top and looking to get over the finish platform. And she's up. And not quite over. Oh, uh, wrong way, sweetheart. Come on, Eileen. Dexie's Midnight Runners, you get it, Maddie? <laughs> And much like that crummy band, Eileen is proving herself to be a one-hit wonder. And Eileen has set the pace with a time of 5.18. Here's our next attacker, Marlin. This, this is nothing. Marlin says the most difficult thing he's been through is his first breakup. <laughs> oh. Down he goes. Ouch. Looks like he just got dumped again. Marlon now makes his way to the beastly battle axes. Whoa! <laughs> Just like his namesake fish, Marlon likes to get wet. Now onto the perilous pole vault. He is holding on, scrambling Maddie, and he's made it! Oh, come on, that is just plain luck. With that move, he could be in a very good position to advance to the stockade. Attacker number three is Jennifer. I'm a Says he or she secretly knows how to fly airplanes. Come on, she's not even old enough to drive. Ooh. Captain Jen, you're clear for landing on runway barrel. That was intense, but she's up and smiling. How you doing there, sweetie? Oh! 
Oh, you scared me. You scared me every time. Now on to the main draw, and wow, Jen certainly earned her wings there with that skillful navigation. Now we join up with Arne. I believe I can fly. He hates math and people who yell at him. Yeah, that's the spirit. Well, good news is he's safe from math today. And slipping, ooh, into the water he goes. Act number two is a killer. Split plus fall equals splat. Oh, I see, it's the shoe's fault. You know, it's a poor workman who blames his tools. Nice work on the proverb. What's a proverb? And Arne is back into the water. Splash. Seriously, Jay, what's a proverb? Never mind. While Jen pulled in a respectable time, Arne is certainly in danger of not advancing to the next round. Well, it's pretty clear the most challenging parts of this course are the rolling mace and the beastly battle axes. You said it. I'm really tall! Janice aced the barrels, but is having trouble on the roll. Watch out for those spikes, they're spiky. You know. Verblin also passed the barrels with ease, but he thought that leaning to his right would help. Not on the roll. And they just keep on coming, Maddie. And keep splatting. And if they make it past the rolling mace, they need to contend with the beastly battle axes. Herblin here claims to be a deep thinker. <laughs> now he's a deep diver. Janice tries to jump from one blade to the other. Oh! Didn't her mother ever tell her it's dangerous to jump from a moving battle axe? Apparently not. Okay. Well, we've seen six amazing attackers so far, but there are still six more to come, and they could blow everyone else out of the water. Literally, and the defenders are just warming up. We're about to take a short break, but we'll be back with more attacker action and find out who will take home the crown of Splatalot right after this. Well, we're back and looking ahead to the incredible continuation of round one. The heat's really gonna be on now. The top time so far is Jen at just over four minutes. The time to beat in order to get into the top six is Arne's rather slow time of nine minutes, 46 seconds. And remember, only the fastest six advance to the next round. And returning to help slow down the attackers are Tinkor, Crocness, and Kookaburra. Let's see what tricks the attackers have up their sleeves. They'll need more tricks than Chris Angel to get through this round. So current of you. Speaking of daredevils, here's Matt. My name's in the Bible. He's a big fan of Winston Churchill. You got a little food on your face, Ed. Thought I'd wash it off. Oh, he's got more than food on his face now. It's a mouthful of barrel. Certainly taking a lot of time here on the mace roll, but I think he's just asking himself, what would Winston Churchill do? Hope the answer was go splat, because he's down. That was a splat that will live on in infamy. What? Never mind. You know, Matt goes by the nickname Superman, and oh, we're seeing it here. <laughs> up, what? up, and away. Splat, Matt go splat. He's looking more like Clark Kent with that unheroic splat. He's up on the platform, and with that time, he's made it into the top six for now. Here's our next attacker, Ella. Do you know that? Because these puppies are sick. She's quite the avid scuba diver. Oh, I guess the B in scuba stands for barrel. Oh. Don't spend too long in that water. Yeah, don't spend too long in that water. <laughs> Is that all you got for me? What have you got? Yeah. Oh. And down, down, down oh. she goes. <laughs> Pitching balls at Kook and Croc, now that is guts! That is cheating! She should be disqualified! Feeling stinky? <laughs> Here comes Tinky! <laughs> Absolutely not, Matt. That is completely legal. I'll be taking this to the splat -a -lot Tribunal. Now she's up and, oh, in the water. Cheaters never prosper. <laughs> well, she's across and eliminating Matt in the process. Our next attacker's Megan. <laughs> Sure you do, but that won't help you complete the course any faster. Boom! Talk to the bear. What? Is that even a saying? Sure, all the cool kids are saying talk to the bear. How you doing there, mate? My name's Cookabar and I'm just here for you, yeah? Is that all right? Boom! <laughs> I'm so sorry, I feel really bad now. So I know that is very mean, but so is your outfit. <laughs> you better watch out, Megan, or you're gonna have to talk to the barrel. 
it is not working. And she didn't even get a foothold on that mace roll, Maddie. Talk to the barrel, Megan. Stop it. Let's catch up with George at the top of the impossible incline. This is for opinion. George says he's a fan of horror movies. Oh, good thing, because that was a horrible splat. Well, he did excellent on the battle axes and the rope bridge, and now he's on to making his attempt at the perilous pole vault, and here he goes. Whoa! That was an appalling attempt. Oh, suddenly I missed talk to the barrel. Defenders! <laughs> that was you, Tinkle. Air high five. Both George and Megan have posted respectable times, but will they advance? This is Stephanie. I have a milk card. Stephanie now having a bit of trouble on the slippery slope. Oh. I'm sorry for a second, man. Apparently she has a fear of bugs, spiders, and overall stuff. I guess by stuff she means success. Oh, she's down again. They say I'm good with magic. You know, make people appear. I can make them disappear too, Tink. I'll show you. So, uh, you know, on the weekend, I was just chilling in my nest and... Boom! Oh! Oh! Slide and splash. A no-look shot, that's just nasty, Maddie. Hey, they're just doing their job. Stephanie's not gonna finish the course today, but she is okay. Feral luck next time, Stephanie. That's gotta stop. Here's our last attacker, Rob. AKA Roberto Sanchez. The beach is that way! Well, I don't remember a beach being part of the castle. But wow, is Rob showing some speed across the barrels and up the slippery slope. Oh. Croc is there flying solo. Where's Coop? Making his way across the mace roll. Amazing speed here. This guy's incredible. This is showboating, plain and simple. Onto the battle axes. Let's freeze that. He's got some serious air there. That's got to be a 10 foot drop. Here, let me see that splatistrator. If he had wings, he could have flown all the way to the finish platform. All right, quit messing around with that. It's a rental. You always get to use the splatistrator. You can have your turn once you show you can splatistrate responsibly. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Wait, he's holding on and climbing up the ramp and has made it to the platform. Yeah! Ah! Judging from that, we'll be seeing Rob in round two. What an outrageous round. I have to say that our team of defenders gelled amazingly and held back some pretty strong attackers. Taking a look at the leaderboard, the times are in, and the top six attackers are Roberto Sanchez, Jennifer, Megan, Herb Daddy, the Purple Carrot Eileen, and Marlon. When we come back, round two kicks things to a whole new level as the top six attackers try to escape the stockade, facing three new defenders who are anxious to send them back. Welcome back. The times are in, and our top six attackers from round one were Rob, Jennifer, Megan, Erwin, Marlon, and Eileen. Each one of these attackers certainly showed what they could do. Now, Maddie, do you have any predictions for this round? Yeah, it's time for our attackers to talk to the barrel. <laughs> you made a t-shirt. You want one? No. This round is called Escape the Stockade for a reason. It takes place in a stockade, and then you have to escape. You know, you really do have such a way with words. I do. We've got our six advancing attackers bound to a spinning wheel. A wheel of misfortune. I'll take an S for splat, Pat. Ugh. Attackers must try to get the ladder rungs that are stacked in the corners, building their ladders one rung at a time. Then they've got to get to a flag from the top of the wheel and take it to the top of the wall. But there are four flags and six attackers. Even I know that four doesn't divide by six. Let's meet our defenders for this round. Lisa! Dawn. Mattress! I don't think these three have worked together before. Definitely picking up on some tension here, Maddie. We'll just have to see how that plays out. Looks like they're ready to get started. Let's drop on in. I call this the spin cycle. Rob is in the navy blue helmet, Eileen in baby blue, Jennifer's in purple, Marlin in orange, Erblin in green, and Megan in violet. Get ready for fire! They're lucky last time that was loaded with fire. That soap is getting everywhere. Close your mouths, kids. Defenders right on target. Get ready, attackers! <laughs> and the attacker is having trouble getting up and sliding right back down. Megan is the first one of the ladders. Too bad it's Erblin's ladder. Talk to the barrel, Megan. Seriously, now. Full 
long body slams to try to cross the spinning wheel to get to the rungs. In your face, Herb Daddy. <laughs> Herblin makes a mad dash to the top of the wheel. Blammo! You know that exact thing happened to me in the shower once. Hey, look this way. That is Thorn up there with the slime stick. Take that, Marlin. That's it, hang on, it's your life attacker. Rob looks totally confused at the top of the spinning wheel. Hey, don't you mean Roberto Sanchez? Si, senor. Impressive rock master Thor! Perhaps you'd like to try one of my slime balls. Knock it off, you <laughs> love birds! We have attackers to take care of! Uh oh, I'm sensing some dissension within the ranks of your defenders, Maddie. No, they're just a well slime machine. Ooh, purple carrot got a good spray there. That's not the only thing going wrong for Eileen. She can't even get her first rung. Oh, this is my ladder. So I'll put it on mine. This is mine. Yes, you did, Megan, a couple of times, actually. And just when you thought there was too much foam, Ballista lets loose with another load. Oh, and Thorn delivers a goo grenade right to Rob's face. Erblin gets his last rung in as Rob heads for the flag. Senior Senches is grappling with the rotating arm like a luchador. What's that? That's a Mexican wrestler, Matt. Show off. Si, senor. This course is proving tougher than a $2 stake for these attackers, Matty. Oh! Felisa, this one's getting away! I got him! Just coming for you! And here we go, Roberto Sanchez is the first to the top with the orange flag. He's certainly proving to be the Rey Mysterio of this course. Nitros is single-handedly trying to hold the rest back. Herb Daddy scrambles to the top with the red flag. And that leaves just two flags left and only two more to advance. But more importantly, two more are going home. These remaining attackers are going bonkers. I can't believe Marlin got a flag. And now he's making his way to his ladder and climbing. Jen has managed to get the final flag. And slides down the spinning wheel out of control. Marlon's at the top with the purple flag. <laughs> but the flag's upside down. He should be disqualified. Eileen and Megan are still working on their ladders. But is there any point? And there you have it. Jen has reached the top of her perch with the blue flag. And this round is complete. Rob, Erblin, Marlin, and Jen advanced to round three. And we say goodbye to Megan and Eileen. That was some incredible pulse-pounding action. Can Rob keep up the incredible pace? Will Jen be able to hold her own against the three guys she's facing off against? Find out when we come back for round three when our four remaining attackers take on six recharged defenders. Twelve kids enter, but only one can claim the crown of Splatalot. We've had some amazing players hit the course today, and now it's come down to this. The final four are going for the crown. And six charged up defenders are on hand to try and stop them. On the course for the capture the crown round, we'll see two new defenders. Gildar and Scab have taken over for Belista and Kookaburra. Returning, we have the weaponsmith Tinkor, Thorn, Nitrous, and the wilderness queen herself, Crocness. This is it, the legendary round three. Here the remaining four attackers go head to head in a race to the finish. They start on the pole drop into the funky foam. The first one to cross the titanic teeter-totter, bounce across the bouncy boys and scale the water wall to capture the crown will be declared the winner. The lane positions are set from the top, Rob in blue, Erblin in green, Jennifer in purple, and Marlin in orange. We defend you attack, take that slap. Just listen to that, the atmosphere is electric. And they're off. Making a dash for the teeter-totters. Defenders get in a quick hit with hideous buckets of slime. How does the slime taste? Made with Gildar's air. Same recipe my mom used for her slime. Herbla now tries to scramble over the barrier, but can hold on. Neither can Roberto Sanchez and Jennifer. Marlon, no! There's nothing to grab. It's grabless. 
I can't believe I get paid to watch kids go splat. I swear I'd do it for free. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You get paid to do this? I gotta talk to my agent. Oh, double splat. This is like a splat symphony. A symphony of splat. Scab letting loose with his caustic crossbow. Gotta give it to him on that one. He's right on target. Now, looks like Roberto Sanchez has a different approach trying to stay in his feet. So unsuccessful. So is Jen, though, but she's taking it slow. And Marlon goes fishing. Up till now, speed has been the key. I don't know about this technique. Herblin again Aww. and falls. Does Herb Daddy want his Herb Mommy? You're just a mean person sometimes. Scab taking a couple shots now. Jen's made it across, though, to the oh. end. Ah, good. Come on, come on, wherever you are. Marlin falls again. It's time for you to let off a little steam. At least you won't be wrinkly going for the crown. Which is more than we can say about you. Now making a late appearance is Erblin, who lunges over the barrier like a spawning salmon. Spawning salmon? Bouncing from boy to boy. I call that the Lindsay Lohan. Off she goes. That will cost her. Two other attackers are now on their way. I think it's too late, though. Jen is making her way up the water wall of no return and is about to do it. She has captured the crown. Jen is the queen of Splatalot, defeating the defenders and the boys. Is she happy or in pain? I can't tell. That was all your fault! Stop crying! Pull yourself together! Stop crying! Stop crying! Pull, your, pull yourself together! And that's how it goes in Splat a Lot. You've got to take the good with the splats. It's been an incredible competition. No one could have predicted that Jen would come from behind like she did to take the crown and beat the boys. We've had some pretty outrageous splats. Of course, not all splats are created equal. That's why we select the splat of the day. Today, the honor goes to Stephanie with an assist from Kookaburra. Chilling in my nest and boom! Oh! Classic Kook, classic splat. And from Splat to all that, let's take a look back at how Jen got here. That's all for now from the kingdom of splat -a -Lot. I'm Jason Agnew. And I'm Matt Chin. Let's check in with the queen one last time. Come on, Jen, talk to the barrel. <laughs>